All right, we will uh, call the meeting to order. Uh, town Council meeting number 13-24. Today is Tuesday, July 2nd. We're in Council Chambers in downtown Freeport for our first scheduled meeting of July. Uh, first order of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, so welcome to uh, those here and those watching electronically. Um, <clears throat> we're going to find out who's here from the council. Uh, Councilor Pillsbury. Present. Councilor Fournier is up north and is excused off. Uh, Councilor Fournier is up north and is excused off, uh, off the grid. Okay, we got a little echo here. Uh, Councilor Lawrence. Here. Councilor Bernoit. Here. Councillor Pilch. Here. And the chair, John Egan, is here. And Eric Smith. Looks like he's going. Present. Present. Online. So we'll be taking uh, uh, roll call votes with one member present uh, electronically this evening. So that's what may be why you see a different sequence in uh, actual voting by the council this evening. Uh, so, Eric, glad you could make it. Thanks. It allows us to have a quorum of five. Uh, our first action item is to waive the reading of the minutes from the June 18th, 2024 meeting. It was council meeting number 12-24, minutes prepared by Chris Wolf. Uh, do we have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded to adopt the minutes and waive the reading of them at this meeting. Uh, Councilor Pillsbury? Aye. Council Lawrence? Yes. Council Benoit? Yes. Council Pilch? Aye. The chair votes yes. And Eric Smith? One more time into the, for the record, Eric. All right, well, we at least have, we at least have five votes. Uh, so that gets the minutes passed. Hopefully Eric will be able to join us here shortly. Um, <clears throat> our next item on the agenda is the uh, announcements. Uh, I have a couple to share, and then we'll go down the line and see if others uh, have something to add um, for July 2nd. The most important part of our comprehensive planning process is you, the general public. Uh, and that's a true statement. That's just not hyperbole. Um, comprehensive planning is really meant to bring a lot of opinions and viewpoints in from the community members because it is your document. In the coming months, there'll be many different opportunities for you to share your thoughts and ideas on the future of Freeport, and you can start by visiting the comp plan website called futurefreeport.com. There you can sign up for email uh, uh, to get uh, updates on your email, and also that we're conducting a community survey, and we've extended the deadline for the submission of that survey to July 15th. So you can find out more about that at futurefreeport.com. Uh, we hope you have a few minutes to take the survey as the results will be used to create the vision statement for the plan. And you can complete the survey online uh, or you can call 865-4743 uh, and ask for a copy to be mailed to you. Uh, nomination papers for all elected positions. Uh, will be available hey, starting course. July 29th. Open seats this year include Councilor at Large, Councilor District 4, RSU 5, Board of Directors, Sewer District, and Water District. Uh, please contact Chris Wolf at the Clerk's Office for more information. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, the Clerk's Office is doing a special plea for photos of downtown Freeport. As uh, they start preparing for the FY24 annual report, I should say any, any part of Freeport, uh, they're asking for all photo takers to consider submitting a few of our beautiful town, no matter where you are, what you see. Uh, we'd love to see a picture of what you're seeing. Uh, and if you're lucky, it may end up on the cover of our annual report. Again, please contact the clerk's office for 
different ways to submit your photos. Uh, I also wanted to make um, just a little bit of a comment on how fabulous the great race was here on Friday, uh, and particularly to thank um, former police chief Sue Nurse and Dodo Brockman, two local organizers who helped bring the great race to Freeport. Um, I was expecting a lot and I was overwhelmed with how fabulous it was. So it exceeded my very high expectations about how much fun uh, and how great it was to see at least 1,500 people that I could count. Not that I counted every one of them, but in terms of estimating um, roughly that crowd uh, downtown uh, enjoying a beautiful day and, and all of the fun events that that event brought here. Um, so uh, again, thanks to the great race organizers and our two local folks, uh, Sue Nurse and Dodo Brockman, who made that happen. Uh, I hope we get a chance to do that again in the future. Um, I also want to call out something that we read about um, probably about six or eight weeks ago now in one of the manager's reports, but um, I, I wanted to say this last meeting that we had two officers on our police department who successfully, safely um, ended a wrong way driver on 295. And that is no easy task. It was an extremely difficult dangerous and brave move for those two officers to uh, race at pursuit speed to catch the wrong way driver. It happened to be very early in the morning, so there was not much traffic, uh, but they were able to successfully uh, encourage and steer the, the vehicle over to the side of the road without any incident and without any damage to our police cruisers, which hardly ever happens, according to Chief Goodman. So. Um, I believe the officers' names are Stubbs and O'Toole, but I might have that wrong. But um, anyway, it's something close to that. I apologize if that's not their actual names. Um, Chief Goodman gave me those names. But um, anyway, two of our finest uh, were able to successfully uh, end a wrong way driver at high speed on 295. There was no incident, there was no accident, and there was no damage, uh, and it was resolved peacefully. So great job by our police force. Uh, and lastly, I just want to um, recognize and remind folks coming up on August 25th, uh, the U.S. Navy Bluegrass Band is going to be here, and we're having a uh, concurrent veterans recognition ceremony uh, that same day um, uh, with details to come. And there's advertisements going out now about that date, so it's going to be a big day for veterans in Freeport, and I hope uh, we have a day like today. Uh, so just to remind you, put that on your calendar and not to miss. Um, other announcements? Dan. Um, just want to add to your comments about the Great Race, which I agree was fantastic. That was immediately followed by the Oyster Festival, uh, okay. which was in town. That's right. Equally fantastic. Yep. yep. Uh, I didn't count the number of people, but I'm going to say 1,501 people were at the Oyster <laughs> Festival. Um, there were, uh, it was great. There were tons of uh, vendors and food trucks and a ton of oysters. It, and, was, uh, it was fabulous. I, people, I ate very well at that. Yeah. One of the people commented that this is a very typical Maine scene. There was garbage. Recycling, compost, oyster shells. Um, so uh, I think everybody, a good time was had by all. Yeah. Uh, kudos to Visit Freeport for putting that on. Yeah, yeah, and I know um, Ken Sparta had a lot to do with that organization yep. too from the Freeport Oyster Bar. Other announcements? Yeah, so Sophie and I have continued to receive some feedback and complaints about loud and frequent gun noise in areas of town. Um, so I've been working with Sophie, who is working with Chief Goodman on sort of figuring out how we address this. Um, However, in the meantime, I just want to ask folks that if this is something that's bothering you and you hear this in your community, to, to reach out either to council or the police so we can kind of understand the scope of, of the issue of what's going on. Thank you for addressing that. That's persistent complaints from various parts of our community over the past couple of years. Yep. Any other announcements? Okay. Uh, we'll move on to our next order, which is... Um, Information exchange. Uh, this is a chance for councilors to share, talk about different committees or constituent feedback. Um, do we have any uh, information exchange items? We have something listed here with the 22 Main, 22 Main Street Committee. Is that you? Not quite ready. Yep. Not quite ready. Okay. We made it better. Yep. Yep. Have we gone to the yet? I have not gotten it to the committee, which is why I should. Uh, so that segues right into the town manager's report, Sophie. Good evening. Um, 
I will say uh, the first thing in my report is that I have fallen in love with Casco Bay. Uh, yesterday, Earl and I went on a trip to um, Buston's oh. to meet with some folks out there, and I had seen it from the shores from Joyce's house, which was wonderful to sit and, and visit, but... Um, out on the bay in the back of the ferry on a sunny day, I really can't say there's. I, I think that we could put we could put the manager's office out there. That would be fun. Um, I uh, a, a few things. The first is just to remind everybody that the Fourth of July is on Thursday, and all non-emergency town um, services are closed. Um, we have a few things happening. Uh, first, we have uh, L.L. Bean has road race at um, with a 7.25 start, 7, 7.30 start, fun run at 9. I'm excited about the parade that's scheduled to start kick off from Middle Street. You think you like Casco Bay. Wait till you <laughs> see this parade. I know. I can't wait to see the parade. Um, at 10 a.m., and Chief Goodman reports that this is a rolling stop, so we don't actually fully close the roads. Um, I'm going to be getting some press out on that on the front page of the um, town um, website. Fireworks are at 9.15. We still could use a few volunteers to help keep people off the field at the RSU. We know that that's a place that folks are going to want to watch the fireworks from. Um, if you're interested, please see um, or talk to Caroline Pelletier, the new assistant town manager who was busily moving her office today. Um, and they're in between the parade and the fireworks at 7.30. Uh, L.L. Bean's also having a, a concert. So busy day. I've learned that this is the busiest public safety day in Freeport in the year. So I'm really excited to see our team in action. We seem to be having some IT issues. Uh, we'll have to get to the bottom of that. Um, on July 9th, which is next Tuesday... Town Hall and the library will be closed to the public from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Brief closure to do a little bit of staff training um, and have some lunch out at um, Public Works, and then we'll be right back at 2 o'clock to finish up for the day. Um, I did go out to Buston's Island uh, where I helped them um, look at a road issue met some folks out there. What a beautiful place. Um, they have a conflict with our August, normal August meeting. Right. Um, and so one of the things I wondered is if it would make sense for us to meet at the end of August with a council meeting and then meet out at Buston's one of the first two weeks in September. Don't know if council has an appetite for that or not. Um, so that we could still have the annual meeting with them. I know um, two councillors in particular who have not experienced the Buston's mm -hmm. Island dinner um, are looking forward to that, so I'm trying to um, make sure that we can make that happen, and we had a request for the schedule change from um, leadership of the Buston's Island Village Corporation to transfer the date to um, potentially September 3rd when, when the leadership can make it, and they definitely want to be a part of that. So that's the opportunity. Um, I'm a little concerned about agenda. We don't get a whole lot of council work accomplished at those meetings. So um, if we move the Buston's visit to September 3rd, we would only have one meeting in September. So if we can manage to take care of some stuff at the end of August, maybe move the second meeting in August even a week later so we're closer to the 3rd, um, then that might work. Does that seem to mm -hmm. fit with folks' calendars? I know summer's always crazy with vacation schedules, and it is Maine in the summer after all. So uh, I saw some nodding heads, mm -hmm. so I think we'll proceed in that direction. Okay. Um, would that be the fourth Tuesday be the fourth, instead yeah. of the third? Mm -hmm. 
Right. So if we could make that am amendment, uh, I think we have to take a vote to change the council meeting schedule. So we'll do that right now. Can you, um, see if Eric, you can talk to Eric. He's back on. Yeah. We don't have him on the 20th, right? Nope. Um, so, uh, Eric, do you have a conflict with August 27th? No, that's fine with me. Okay. So um, I'll accept a motion. Well, I'll make the motion to uh, move the second. Just adding a meeting. We don't have a meeting on the 20th. So just adding a new meeting. Yeah. You or have... adding a meeting. Okay. So I'll make a motion to add a regular council meeting on Tuesday, August 27th, uh, and adjust the schedule so that the Bustons Island Corporation joint meeting with the town council occur on Tuesday, September 3rd. Second. Okay. Uh, been moved and seconded. That fits with folks' schedules. We'll take a roll call vote. Councillor Pillsbury? Aye. Councillor Lawrence? Aye. Councillor Benoit? Yes. Councillor Pilch? Aye. Chair votes yes. Eric? Aye. Great. Six to zero. All right. We just adjusted the schedule and we can let the Village Corporation folks know that we're on for September 3rd. Um, Oh, uh, Eric, we lost you while we were taking. No, we, we lost you while we were taking the vote on the minutes. Did you have any questions? Are you in favor of adopting the minutes as presented? No, I I vote aye on accepting the minutes. Okay. Uh, apologies, my audio was intermittent for a while, and I left and rejoined. And it's okay. Great. It seems to be better now. Uh, all right. So that takes care of the schedule change. Anything else? Um, if you haven't finished your report yet. I just wanted to let folks know that um, the Freeport Community Library is going to be partnering with Freeport CAN on getting some lawn signs out um, that they have made around climate change. Um, thought that would be part of our um, the, the beginning of the campaign that's in the climate action plan. Great. Um, and... We've had some complaints about odor at the composting by the Silver Bullet, um, trying to figure out if it's composting or recycling. We think it's the composting, um, and we think it's shells, um, you know, shellfish shells. Uh, we know that that's something that we want people to compost. So uh, we made a mid-season shift and we're asking the company to come more frequently to pick it up. Um, it may result in a little bit of a budget overrun, but we're hoping that um, it will only be, you know, a couple months that we'll have to do that. And then once it gets cooler, cooler right. we should be fine. Um, and I'm, I don't know if you have any questions for me. I do have one easy one. Do you know if folks can watch the fireworks from the bleachers at the field? Yes. Just not on the field. Not on the field, Great. but the bleachers. The The school was willing to um, allow that access as long as we had some volunteers that would help keep people off the field. Great. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, our next item is the public comment. Uh, this is a chance for the general public to address the council, uh, make comments about anything they're concerned about or potentially what we're doing right. Um, this is for uh, members present here in council chambers. We'll have a segment later on in the agenda for anyone participating virtually to uh, do public comment on non-agenda items. Uh, Joyce, welcome. Thank you. So I'm the cemetery lady and this week we are working at the first parish Cemetery, which is located on Meeting House Road next to Wilbur's Chocolate Factory. We are there every day, including the 4th, from 7.30 until we get done, which they're still there because it's still light. I would love it if some of the counselors could stop by and take a look and see what it is that we do and how we do it and um, the good work that's being done there. So far... Uh, Monday and Tuesday, we have touched 28 stones. Um, most of them are now standing and are nice and pretty. So please, and if the public wants to drop by, you're welcome also. And anybody that's interested in learning uh, can set up a date with me while I'm there. And 
will make sure that you get the education that you need in order to clean or restand a stone correctly without doing any damage. Uh, tomorrow afternoon, is you'll be there too? Great. Yes. I'll, I'll make it by. Certainly will. I'll be back from lunch at 1 o'clock. Thanks for the information. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Joyce. I have a second item. Oh, great. If there's nobody else. There's not. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> so, um, well, there's a second item with the cemetery first. That cemetery has a stone wall, and it is over 200 years old, and it is in need of repair. We're doing a fantastic thing inside the cemetery. It would be wonderful if somebody that had ties with the historical society um, could help us find a grant that perhaps we could at least restand the wall that's along Meeting House Road. Uh, so that it looks good because it is in really bad shape but I we don't have the money the world doesn't have the money probably to do all four walls but if we could at least get that one wall done that would be great so if you see a grant or something out there that would work for an ancient cemetery stones in there start in the early 1700s so it is one of the oldest in town so I think it would qualify okay so can I ask a question on that, Joyce? Certainly. Given the age of that stone wall, I might assume that the stones are manageable by humans and therefore maybe not necessarily that you need really expensive hourly rental equipment in order to set the stones, or is that? All but the top stone. There are humongous top, flat top stones on top of the wall. Okay. So, you do so that would probably yeah. take at least two people, if not three, in order to lift. But I don't think it would need any backhoe or loader or right. anything of that nature. Right. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So the second item. In the 20 years since I've retired, I've never felt it necessary to introduce myself like this. But for this item, my name is Joyce Clarkson Veyu, Lieutenant Colonel, United States Army, retired. I'm in front of you tonight as a patriot, a veteran, as someone who has had members of her family in almost every conflict or war that this country has been part of to include four known patriots in the revolution. I participate in all veteran affairs here in town to include the Memorial Day Parade. And what happened at the Memorial Day Parade to myself and the other veterans and the parents of the children that get to participate in that upset me terribly. It was hurtful to all veterans. It was hurtful to the parents who actually get to go and see their children parade down the street, play their instrument, the fact that somebody in our community, a group of people in our community, thought that that was the appropriate place to protest in front of the entire L.L. Bean store area so that none of the parents got to use that area, I think was wrong. I think that we need to seriously look at our special events permitting process and unfortunately, I think we need to include that type of activity in and make them require a permit so that we can say yes or no or yes, but you can only do it at this location. If they'd been here at town hall, it would have been a whole different scenario. But to have them do it in a memorial parade for our veterans, I just found very offensive. And um, it's taken me this long to calm down and to be able to bring it to you. So thank you, and please consider adding that to our ordinance. Thanks for the comments and the feedback, Joyce. Yeah. Have a good meeting. All right. I don't see any other members of the public who wish to get up and make comments on the non-agenda item, so we'll... Uh, start with our action items. Um, first action item is adopting the consent agenda. <coughs> uh, the consent agenda has two items on it. Um, sorry, one item on it. 
uh, item number 179A-24 uh, to consider action relative to voting the District 23 official ballot for the MMA Legislative Policy Committee. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and read it so we can just take action on it. Uh, be it ordered that the Town Council cast its ballot for Carrie Weeman as the Maine Municipal Association LPC member uh, representing the Town of Freeport for the period July 1, 2024 to June 30, 2026. Second. Um, <clears throat> this is the consent agenda. Is there any reason why we should not um, just move the consent agenda? Does anybody want to talk about this nomination that's on the consent agenda? All right, we'll go ahead and take the vote. Councilor Pillsbury? Aye. Councilor Lawrence? Yes. Councilor Benoit? Yes. Councilor Pilch? Aye. Councilor Smith? Aye. There we go. And the chair votes yes. Thank you. Um, all right, we're getting to the uh, public hearing portion. We're, we're having three public hearings this evening. Um, they are all rather ordinary, um, which may explain the very light attendance in the public portion of our public hearings. Um, so our first uh, public hearing is item number 180-24. Uh, this is related to um, adopting changes to our zoning ordinance, Chapter 21, Section 201. Uh, I'll go ahead and open the public hearing to see if there's anyone that wishes to speak to item number 180-24. Uh, do we have anybody uh, electronically participating? No, I can give you the, the general. Yeah, let me just uh, open and close the public hearing. So I don't see any other members. Chama, if you're not here to testify on the public hearing. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, Councillor uh, Pillsbury, could you please read the be it ordained, and then we'll take the vote. Sure. Be it ordained that amendments to Chapter 21 Freeport Zoning Ordinance Section 201, general restrictions regarding lots transected by two or more zoning district boundaries be adopted. Second. All right. Uh, we had a nice explanation of this from uh, our planning staff and code officer at our last meeting. Uh, if there are any questions related to that, any updates or developments, Sophie, to talk about? No. I think it was pretty straightforward. All right. So uh, all those in favor, I'm sorry, I have to take a vote. Um, Councillor, we're going to take the vote now. Councillor Pillsbury? Aye. Councillor Lawrence? Yes. Councillor Benoit? Yes. Councillor Pilch? Aye. Councillor Smith? Aye. And the chair votes yes. Item number 180-24 carries unanimously. All right, our second public hearing tonight is number 181-24. This is a public hearing about the repeal of newspaper vending machine device regulations. Uh, this is a uh, repeal of the Code of Ordinances in Chapter 45. Um, this is a public hearing. Anyone wish to testify uh, for or against or make comments on this particular item? I don't see any indication, so we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Council Lawrence, could you please read the Beat Ordained? Sure. Be it ordained that the Freeport Code of Ordinances, Chapter 45, newspaper vending devices on public streets and side, sidewalks be repealed. Second. All right, they're moved and seconded. Sophie, we had a little bit of conversation last meeting about this, but can you just remind folks who might be listening? I know newspapers are in scarce supply these days in the printed form, but um, what's the background on this? Repeal? So, so um, at the ordinance committee, we staff has been challenged to identify ordinances that we are not using that seem obsolete. Um, this is one that came up because our town clerk in the nine, nine. nine years that she's been here has never seen uh, requests come through. Um, we uh, are also able to um, regulate the placement of any of the machines through the ADA and other um, rules at our discretion. Um, so this went to the ordinance committee. They reviewed the, um, the ordinance and decided that it really did seem a little obsolete and not something that we were utilizing. And 
for that reason, um, felt like it was useful to recommend that council consider repealing it. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. This has been moved and seconded. Any further discussion about the repeal of this particular segment of the ordinance? All right. We'll go ahead and vote on it. Councillor Pillsbury? Aye. Councillor Lawrence? Yep. Councillor Benoit? Yes. Councillor Pilch? Aye. Councillor Smith? Aye. And the chair votes yes. Item number 181-24 carries 6 to 0. Section or chapter 45 related to newspaper vending devices on public streets and sidewalks is repealed. Uh, our third and final public hearing this evening is to consider action relative to a special amusement permit renewal for Bucks Naked Barbecue. This is a public hearing. Anyone wish to testify on the permit renewal for Bucks Naked Barbecue special amusement permit? For those wondering, the special amusement permit is for uh, establishments that are serving alcohol and offering live music and entertainment at the same time. Uh, all right, so we're going to go ahead and close the public hearing. Any comments or discussion from councillors? <clears throat> Councillor Bernoit, can you please read the be it ordered? Be it ordered that a special amusement permit renewal for Bucks Naked BBQ be approved. Second. Been moved and seconded. We'll go down the line. Councillor Pillsbury? Aye. Councillor Lawrence? Yes. Councillor Benoit? Yes. Councillor Pilch? Aye. Councillor Smith? Aye. And the chair votes yes. Item number 182-24 carries 6 to 0. Special amusement permit renewal is hereby granted to Bucks Naked Barbecue. Uh, all right, that concludes our three public hearings. Our next item is 183-24. This is to set a public hearing at our next meeting, which is on July 16th, uh, related to special amusement permit renewals for some other establishments. Uh, Councillor Pilch, could you please read the beat ordered? Beat ordered that a public hearing be set for July 16th, 2024, at the council meeting starting at 6 p.m. in town council chambers at 30 Main Street, Freeport, to discuss special amusement permit renewals for the following. One, Cadenza, two, Stars and Stripes, three, Hilton Garden Inn, and four, Freeport Oyster Bar. Second. All right. It's been moved and seconded to set the public hearing on July 16th for the renewal for those four establishments. Uh, we'll have a uh, further chance for comment later, but any questions you'd like to ask of staff or anything to follow up on between now and then? All right. Not seeing any. We'll go ahead and vote on setting the public hearing. Councillor Pillsbury? Aye. Councillor Lawrence? Yes. Councillor Benoit? Yes. Councillor Pilch? Aye. Councillor Smith? He always makes it very suspenseful. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Smith? Aye. 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 There we go. <laughs> Boy, you leave us waiting for so long. Your votes, yes. Uh, item number 183-24 uh, passes 6 to 0. We hereby set a public hearing for renewals on July 16th. Uh, our next item is 184-24 uh, to consider action relative to the appointment of a certified public accountant firm for a post audit for fiscal year 2024. Uh, I have a question about post audit. Is, isn't it just the audit? Or they it? consider it a post audit because it's an it audit after, after, after the okay, fiscal great. year. That's a CPA yeah. term then. Um, Councillor Smith, if you have the agenda, could you please read the beat ordered? Uh, yes. Uh, be it ordered that Runyon Christine Ouellette be appointed to conduct a post audit for fiscal year 2024. Second. All right, been moved and seconded. This is pretty routine. They've been our auditor for a number of years. I might say that the audit reports are happily boring um, <laughs> because they bring forward uh, nothing but total compliance and solid remarks for our finance director and our finance team. But um, any reason why we should be having a conversation about this? No, I am, I am familiar with Runyon, Kirsten, and Willette. They do really good work. They're kind of the gold standard with, for municipal um, account um, auditing. Uh, they um, have internal mechanisms, so we've 
We've been with them since 2013. They rotate whether it's the person we see or the person behind the scenes to make sure that it's different eyes on our um, audit process. Um, and in a time when audit firms are having difficulty with staff and dismissing clients, um, it, the, I would not want to try to change this time of year. Um, but um, it kind of says something about our finance staff that we continue to be one of their priority clients. So I'm, I'm pleased with that. Great. I just want to clarify my glib comment about boring was about mm -hmm. the report, not mm -hmm. about the firm or anybody at the firm. I uh, always enjoy hearing the good news from the staff that come and report that. Um, just in case anybody got confused on that, I apologize if that came across snarky. Um, all right, so we have it uh, moved and seconded. Uh, we'll go down the line. Councillor Pillsbury. Aye. Councillor Lawrence. Yes. Councillor Benoit. Yes. Councillor Pilch. Aye. Councillor Smith. Aye. And the chair votes yes. Item number 184-24, uh, carry 6 to 0. We have appointed Runyon, Kirstein, and Willette as our auditor for fiscal year 2024. Uh, our last Action item this evening is item number 185-24 to consider action relative to extending the sunset, sunset date of the housing committee that we, ad hoc housing committee that we created last year, uh, to extending that to June 30, 2025. Um, we had talked earlier this calendar year uh, that the housing committee was making some recommendations. Um, they're going to participate in um, reviews of some of the comprehensive plan. In fact, I already have made some comments about elements of the comprehensive plan um, and the uh, uh, documents that go with that. Um, and there's also now uh, a significant amount, as was presented at a couple of meetings ago, uh, a significant amount of data that the state has made available by community um, so that you can really as a local community get a snapshot picture of what's in your town as well as what's happening in your region. So I think there's some more work to do. Um, I'm on the council liaison for that committee, which is why I'm proposing this um, and hoping that you agree uh, so that we have a chance for um, this committee and its uh, very invested individuals to consider, to continue to contribute um, data and perspectives so that as we're going through things like rewriting downtown design review ordinances and finishing up our comprehensive plan and coming up with more pro-housing positive statutes uh, that we'll have some input from, from local professionals. May I make a public comment? Sure. Thank you. Hi, my name is Chalmers Hardenberg. I've been attending the housing committee meetings and I think this group is fantastic. <clears throat> so I'm asking the council if they would consider making it a permanent committee. I, I know that our town manager is trying to shrink the number of committees, so I'm not sure how that fits in with her desire. But I think this, as we all know, this town needs housing, and to have this just be an ad hoc committee that now has a, a sunset date only a year from now it, is crazy. It, this is one of our, if not the most important issue facing us, getting more housing, so I think we should, I'd like to see this council make it a permanent committee. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, I think by practice we could consider that, but probably not until the end of this, or near the end of, of this extension, if assuming this extension goes forward. Chip. Yeah, do you think the committee could maybe try to figure out a way to figure out what the town really wants? I mean, do we really want it? And I don't care which way we go, but we keep saying we want to have housing, we want to have more housing, and I think we need more housing. I'd like to do that. But the question comes down to, does the majority of the town think we need to have more housing, or is it a group of a small group of people that say, yep, we need to have this because this is what we should do? You, you know, you can do it either way. You can say, yeah, you know what, it's a problem, but we don't want to solve it and we're happy with the way things are so I'd like to have an answer to that so 
So right now, we have underway the comprehensive plan process, which every resident has the ability to participate in, which sets the vision for the community. And um, there is a survey that's out right now that has been extended for a while um, to allow members of the public to give their feedback on town growth, housing, all sorts of issues like that. Um, it can, you can access it online from the front page of the website, and paper copies are available either at the library or by uh, just contacting the town office and we'll mail you one. Um, so there is a process underway. I think one of the things that can be frustrating when leading a charge like this um, from a staff perspective, the comprehensive plan is a real, really heavy lift. And um, supporting the community, full community engagement. Um, and I think what is tough is when we have so many visioning processes and now we have the comp plan process to have the people that take the time to give their voice and their input um, then be counted as the ma minority voice, I think that that's hard. And so what I would really encourage is for everybody to participate in the comp plan process because at the end of the day, that's what council is going to have to say kind of is the voice of the community. You, how many surveys have been returned? Um, I don't have that yeah. answer. I think my assistant, the assistant town manager, is on the Zoom. Maybe not. Um, yep. I am come. here, if you can hear me. Yep. Um, I think we're at about 350 as of this afternoon. We received quite a few in paper. There's copies in the lobby. There is a question on there about the rate of growth. I would also invite everyone to come to community workshop number two in September. Sorry, I don't have the date in front of me, but that is all about housing. Uh, so 350, and I didn't mean to imply that was the minority. I'm just saying yeah. it is not a, uh, it seems it's a small group that's participating. And is this open to every citizen or is it every registered voter? It's anyone who lives in Freeport. Anybody who lives in Two year old to 20 to uh, 100 years. Okay, good. Can I just add one thing? We did do a direct mailer to all households in Freeport and about a couple hundred notices home with all school children. It was two-sided and it advertised the community workshop on June 12th and on the second side was a link to the survey and a phone number for people to get it. The comprehensive plan, if you haven't seen the video, is super important because this is what that guides the planning board's land use policy decisions. So if we want more housing or certain types of housing, this is what we want to be sharing with our residents and business owners and employees in town, because this is what's going to guide the planning board in the decision-making process as they look to make zoning changes. Thanks, Caroline. Go ahead, Joanna. Um, going back to Chalmers' comment, um, I was thinking the same thing of if it's so important, I think it is um, making it permanent. And we've been talking about this with the Social Racial Equity Committee as well. So I'm curious about the process of how we decide and when, Chair Eden was saying, we would think about that towards the end of this renewal. So I just, I'm curious about how that process works and how we decide. And your face tells me you're not so sure. <laughs> I, I would defer to learn from the council chair or the town clerk because this will be new in Freeport for me. Committee assignments happen shortly after the new council is seated, and so that's one opportunity to look at the committee structure at that point while we're making assignments to the committees. Um, I was suggesting uh, looking at the um, permanency of, of this committee towards the end of this action that we're going to take this evening. Um, we don't have everybody here, and we haven't had much chance to think about it, so I'd rather not take the action this evening about what the committee's permanency status is. But, um, I, you know, that, that's just a suggestion. I don't think there's anything really rigid about that. Um, maybe the next likely 
time would be roughly when the committee structure is being sorted out with the new council after the November election. Yeah, and I think I'm curious too of kind of thinking through what are the pros and cons of ad hoc versus permanent, you know, yeah. is there really a big change in how they function? Is it just the sunset hard deadline? Yeah. There's two, two dynamics there um, that I've been advised of in, in my time, and one is that if we have um, so many committees, it can be a challenge for counselors to be able to make all of those meetings and bring effectively that information coming back. Um, on the flip side, if you have a, a wider array of committee opportunities, theoretically that's more chances for the general public to participate right. in town government which I think is always a motive that we should put up front because uh, we never have enough um, members of the general public on just the committees that we have now. And we have quite a bit uh, of, of committee structure for different opportunities. So there's a, a balance there about how many is too many and how many is enough to get public input versus m managing the data that comes forward. Um, and we've heard the manager talk a couple of times now already about permanent council committee structures tend to also then require some uh, attention and administration from a staff member. And so if we keep adding to that list, we're pulling the staff thinner and thinner. So I'm sensitive to that as well. Um, I think there actually are, uh, I don't want to say this the wrong way, but I think there are tiers of council, I'm sorry, of committee action that could feed into other committees that do have staff function. So I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a given that every committee of the council has to have a staff person assigned to it, if we have a counselor assigned to it. Right. Um, I think at a minimum, <laughs> the committee should have a staff person or a counselor. We don't want right. folks not feeling like they're tethered to anything. Um, but I think we could actually think about this ahead of time forethought and, and create maybe a, a structure where committees, not necessarily subcommittees, but there are committees whose staff capacity and staff connection uh, feed through something else that's already there. Uh, and just put a little bit of logic so we don't have 17 committees coming forward to the podium. When are you going to take up my suggested ordinance or when are you going to take this action that we brought forward the last, you know, that kind of thing. So I think we can manage that traffic flow a little ahead of time. The only other thing I'd say about an ad hoc committee is that it gives people uh, an, a, a chance to participate that doesn't take three years. Yeah, that's true. So you sunset it, it's done. If we need it again, we can always stand it up again and, and, and do that. But it, most people don't have three years to give to something like this. And so it gives people a chance to get their feet wet, see, hey, this is pretty good. So I, I like having ad hoc committees for that reason. And the situation changes, and so we don't need it, you know? Yeah. yeah, and I think there's definitely a place for ad hoc, and I think just trying to figure out when, if there is a line of ad hoc becoming more permanent, just thinking about when that happens. Right. Yeah. Good point. If I was going to give my two cents after making my scared face, <laughs> it would be that for ad hoc committees, I see them more as there is an issue, there is something that we need very clear feedback on. Um, a standing committee, I think, really moves into that policy place of having a body of work that there are policies um, that council wants feedback on um, at the kind of the policy level. Um, when I think of the um, ad hoc um, housing committee, that has been, they've evaluated policy, they've looked at things, but there were some very clear tasks in front of them that council was looking for some very clear guidance that has rolled off into staff action and committee action. Uh, I can just add that as a member of the ad hoc housing committee, I think the opportunity we have in September that Caroline mentioned, which is the, the next um, community workshop event related to housing as it relates to the comprehensive plan, is an excellent opportunity for the housing committee to have an adjunct activity either right before or right after or maybe even during that workshop to to talk about 
the issues that the committee has really been hashing on, which is how do we get, how do we, how do we incentivize and, and bring in more opportunities for development of housing of all types, multifamily, single family ownership, rentals, uh, across the board. So um, at our next meeting, which is not going to be next Wednesday, um, I would like to bring that to the committee and, and see if maybe we can have an action plan to come forward in September uh, to be concurrent with that comprehensive plan workshop. Does that include the inventory that we had completed by Enoch? Yeah. Yep. Great. I haven't seen what that looks like. Um, but I'm sure when our new development director gets back from or starts his job, we will be ready to um, to roll that out for folks. Matt? Uh, just a couple of points. One, um, I mean, it, this is probably an opportunity for us to rethink how we interact with committees. And I think one of the great benefits of, of Sophie so far is that it feels like our Tuesdays are a little bit shorter. Um, and perhaps there's a, a way for us to have more engagement as a whole group with a committee more frequently than just like the one time a year. I think, you know, it's a big ask for both sides in the liaison to always be able to articulate and convey messages back and forth. And I'd be open to figuring out a way to spending a little bit of time on a more regular basis with these committees to help give them direction, help hear what they're challenged with, what they're struggling with, rather than just like once a year. Um, I, I think that's a potential. Um, and I think it's, for me, it's uh, specific to the housing committee, because we had talked the last time about having a little bit more frequent uh, reporting or interaction with that group so that they didn't get too far afield and have us you know, waste time and say, well, we didn't really need you to go and look at this, or we didn't need you to um, to do X, Y, and Z, and, and have it just a, a little bit more, uh, a little bit better coordination. So, I'd be in favor of, of supporting the extension of of the uh, end date, but I, I would like us to see some more frequent interaction with that group, just given how important the issue is and how complex it is. Excellent suggestion. We can make that happen. Sophie and I, in our fun brainstorming sessions we tend to get into, have been floating this idea of how do we get more regular updates from committees in general. And even if that's a quarterly written update that we review here on Tuesdays, um, just some sort of basic infrastructure where we expect a written update quarterly or something that's simple. It doesn't have to be revolutionary. We're changing the whole system of how we do this, but just formalizing it a bit I think could be helpful. Communication. Who knew, right? Key element. Yes. Making stuff happen. All right, so uh, great discussion. We have the item on the floor. Uh, any more comments or questions before we vote? Didn't read it. Yeah, we did. We did? Okay. Um, I didn't write it down. I usually write it down. I guess we didn't read it. I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, be it ordered that the sunset date of the Freeport Housing Committee be extended to June 30th, 2025 in order to assist town staff with the implementation of community priorities. Second. All right, been moved and seconded. Good, fruitful discussion. Councilor Pillsbury? Aye. Councilor Lawrence? Yes. Councilor Benoit? Yes. Councilor Pilch? Aye. Councilor Smith? Aye. And the chair votes yes. Um, Eric, I can't see the screen, so if you're using an electronic hand, I may not see it, so just jump in if you've got dialogue to add. I'm sorry that I'm not giving you much uh, of an opportunity to participate verbally here, but um, so just uh, be, be assertive if you want to say something firm. I don't know if you can oh, do I will. that. Uh, all right, item number 174-24 has been tabled for this evening and will be taken up on July 16th. Uh, that concludes our action items. The last item before we get to other business is uh, public comment for those participating virtually. Uh, this is an opportunity for those folks online to make a public comment on non-agenda items. Uh, please state your name and where you live and keep your comments to three minutes. Uh, do we have anyone wishing to participate online? 
We have two very important people online. Neither of them want to participate. Okay. Uh, so we'll move on to other business. We have one other business item, which is a report back on the Climate Action Plan. Councillor Benoit. So this is in response to sort of our discussion last meeting about requesting more outreach and education about the Climate Action Plan. Um, so Sophie, Eric, and I met to kind of start brainstorming how to, brainstorming how to think through this and met with the um, Sustainability Advisory Board as well and are workshopping this idea of proposing district-based listening education events for the public, um, hoping that counselors who are not at large would attend the district event that they represent. Um, and this would sort of be... Uh, when we, we met with FSAB, it was clear it's not meant to be an opportunity to sort of pick apart the climate action plan, talk about what we want to see and what we don't want to see, but instead to sort of be an opportunity to explain what the plan is, what the plan is not, and have more open communication about this. So with the idea of getting out of our sort of downtown bubble and getting into the community a bit more um, and going out into districts. I know that uh, Freeport Climate Action Now is a huge proponent of this and um, is also interested in the conversation evolving potentially even into identifying and, and talking about resilience nodes within the community um, yeah. to be storm responsive or crisis responsive areas where people can go to when they sort of get to talk about these things. So, yeah. um, again, communication, more chance we get to get out into neighborhoods I think is a good thing. Right, and I think this is a great sort of pilot effort for how we can outreach more effectively in the future for big plans that we have happening here. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about trying it out. Yeah. I'm excited just to add that um, representatives from Freeport CAN um, have approached me and asked if we would accept them partnering with us to get the word out and to help generate some excitement around those listening sessions and education and outreach. And um, I think... Uh, the, I think the the next step is for me to meet with them because I, I do think it's important that this is not general education. It's about the plan um, and just to make sure that we stay within kind of that lane. But they're excited and happy to help move the next step. I wouldn't mind joining that conversation. Awesome. I'd like to hear what folks are, have in mind for that, so just to listen. Awesome. And, um, you know, the Sustainability Advisory Board is on board with sort of being there as the experts of the plan to talk about how they did outreach, how they developed it, um, and their thoughts behind the work they, they've done. Right. So, and our timeline for this would be, I think we picked September. Late, I, think we, I think we landed on late September, late September, early October. Yes to line up with these events happening leading into um, a public hearing for the plan. Yeah. Could I ask uh, a question, which is that do the events need to be only focused on the climate action plan? Because we used to have some council meetings in different districts where we could discuss other business as well. So if it's pitched as a climate action plan, comma, and other town business, it might be an opportunity just for district council to say, here's what we've been up to for the last year. Are there any particular concerns in this district? I don't expect that there's much in that category, but if we allow for five minutes, ten minutes at the top of the meeting to announce some things and ask if there's any topics before we dive into the climate action plan, is that Yeah, I don't right? see why not, especially because I do think this is hopefully the start of that happening more. I think yeah. that's a good thing, so I would definitely support yeah, it was, that. It was canceled over COVID. I right? imagine, yeah, yeah, back, that yeah. makes sense, yeah. It seems kind of like a low-hanging fruit of how do we be better at communicating. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Which is clearly a need, we know. Yeah. Yep. All right, that moves us through the agenda. Let's talk about next steps. I believe Sophie is beginning the outreach for some of the venues we've identified with staff in the districts. The so, locations. Yes, yeah. yeah. So. When we, we did this in the past, it was all the community center, and we just had districts show up. So it was like District 2, 1 in... One and three and two and four. That's how we did in the past. That's all so I think the idea that Councillors Benoit and Smith had were to actually go to the districts. Um, so we're looking at some areas 
um, that would, if we can get into free, um, that would also allow kind of rain or shine. I think District 4 is the tough one. And we're yeah, still... On a road field. No, well, that's kind of what we came up with, and we're hoping we'll have a hearty group. Uh, we have had a long time ago, I remember going to one at Wolfsnick Farm at one of the barns. That's not District No, but I'm just saying for, for out, out in the community. Um, <laughs> for space. Uh, yeah, that's true. The recycling center is... And everybody shows up there eventually. Everybody knows where it is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Isn't there a sign that time? Yes. Everybody knows your name? <laughs> That's right. Uh, I think that takes us through our agenda this evening. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All right. Councilor Pillsbury? Aye. Councilor Lawrence? Yes. Councilor Benoit? Yes. Councilor Pilch? Aye. Councilor Smith? Aye. And the chair votes yes. We are adjourned. Thanks very much. Hi, John. I assume that we.